All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about some iconic EDC knives. Now, before we get into this, don't forget to go down into the comment section below and let me know what some of your iconic knives or EDC knives are. This is something that always fascinates me because I feel like I've been in the EDC knife game, maybe definitely not as long as some of my viewers or some of my subscribers, but for sure I've been in the EDC game for quite a while. And so these are knives that, or all these knives in particular, are going to be knives that you know, like I saw either coming up, growing up, or just, you know, watching EDC videos, you know, going into the blogs and the forums and just learning about everyday carry. These are some of the knives that for me have always been like super, super popular or like they stick out really well. Maybe not super popular, but you know, like they always like stick out. They're very prominent. And pretty much all of these different brands and manufacturers have their own cult following, right, wrong, or indifferent. So for me, I thought it would be a fun video to go over these knives and yeah, roughly how long they've been in existence. So the first one that I've been showcasing off while talking is the Spyderco Delica. Now the Delica, I kind of have to say, is partly the reason why I wanted to make this video because the Delica has been around for an incredibly long time. And if I remember correctly, though I could be totally butchering the history here, I don't always believe that it was called the Delica, but essentially the Spyderco Delica was one of the first real kind of entries into the everyday carry pocket knife scene. Now, of course, it's kind of hard to say who exactly was the first because, you know, uh, Chris Reeve knives with the Sabenza, Benchmade with several of their offerings, were all very, very close in t the time frame, like overall. And so like they were all kind of coming out late 80s, early 90s. Um, and so it is exactly hard to say who was the first one, though I, if I remember correctly, Spyderco was the first one to like put a pocket clip on a knife, which kind of blows my mind that it legitimately took us like, the, <laughs> there was no like, actual official pocket knives like with pocket clips that uh, like until like the 80s and 90s like kind of seems crazy when you think that like we were over here inventing you know like the m16 which is basically the like the actual system for the m16 ar-15 like ar platform rifle has existed since like the 50s basically and so like we didn't start putting pocket clips on knives until like the 80s and 90s kind of seems crazy when you think about that but anyways um i don't believe it was the delica at first but the very first knives with clips were Spyderco. So anyways, um, the Delica is definitely one of those kind of early entries. And of course, this is not one of those early entries. Um, this is a K390 Delica 4 with, um, you know, like it's FRN multi or like multi-way grip pattern and stuff. So the earlier ones definitely were not like this. And the earlier ones had like an integral pocket clip that was like molded into the handle which is definitely not as cool as a multi-position clip like the Delica 4. However, once again, this is an iconic knife. And I think that what makes the Delica 4 such an iconic knife is its super carryability. And I think that honestly, like it's kind of funny that, you know, we started off like this is essentially like one of the first real pocket knives. And then we gravitated away from this going with thicker handled, thicker blade stocked knives. And now we're kind of going back to it like the TRM Neutron uh, 2 here is like a far newer knife but in basic resemblance they are super super similar they are super super similar so like there's so much about these two knives that are like basically the same so we've kind of come full circle on folding knives but that's not necessarily a bad thing because a lot of people love the Delica for what it is now let's talk about the Benchmade Griptilian. The Griptilian, in my opinion, has to be one of the more iconic knives because unfortunately, while the Griptilian nowadays has kind of fallen out of favor for people, like this knife is not as popular as it used to be. And this used to be basically like, I would say the gold standard for, or maybe the unit of measure for knives. Like if it cannot, you know, like this is like basically, or what a basic knife should be like, right? Like an overall function form, like this is just pretty much the gold standard. However, like I said, a lot of people have drifted more towards things like the bug out, the bailout, and stuff like that. And unfortunately, it's one of those things where the Griptilian has kind of gone by the wayside. But I think that this has to be an iconic knife because undoubtedly this is basically what set Benchmade 
like on the map. And if it wasn't for the Griptilian that they're now kind of discontinuing, legitimately like Benchmade would not be as popular as they are, or at least as well known as they are today, if it wasn't for this knife. So I will say that much about the um, Griptilian. It is a really iconic knife and uh, it's a really functional knife. It's been around since the early 2000s. If I remember correctly, I wanna say it was like the early 2000s uh, that this blade came to be, but uh, yeah. So it's, it's a great knife. Um, I have a bunch of Griptilians. I have this one and then two mini grips um, that I like quite a bit, but uh, they're all pretty cool, pretty awesome knives. I'm not the largest fan of Benchmade, but undoubtedly the Griptilian is probably the bench, best Benchmade that was ever made like full production wise. I am of course partial to the Skirmish, the 630 Skirmish and 635 Mini Skirmish, but as far as like the best knives they ever made, Griptilian's probably really high up there. All right, now let's talk about Emerson. Emerson, once again, started around the same time as a lot of the other kind of pocket knife companies, if you will, around that like late 80s, early 90s time frame. This one is, I'm actually not 100% sure when the Horseman came out or the Mini CQC8, but it is, I wanna say around like the early to mid 2000s. But I just picked this one because this is very, um, I'd say like the, the Horseman slash uh, CQC8 are very, um, I'm not sure the best way to put it, but like very just indicative of what makes Emerson Emerson. Like they have a very prominent wave feature. They have the uh, chisel grind. And I think like this very sweeping or flowing blade with a very um, robust kind of uh, grip to it that it could be easily held with gloves. It's gonna lock you in tons of traction and a nice thumb ramp. So obviously Emerson does make things aside from this, like the A100, which is definitely a departure from the normal Emerson. But I would say that like the CQC8, the uh, Horseman, even the, the um, what are they, Commander series, like Minicom, Com, Super Commander, um, you know, like all of those are very indicative of the design and general kind of tactical aesthetic of Emerson. And I think like Emerson was always really meant to be, or they tried to put them in a position to be, you know, a more affordable, but still, you know, hard use and a kind of higher end um, folding knife for tactical use. So this, like I said, is the Horseman, the CQC or Mini CQC 8. And I really like it. I think it's actually probably one of my favorite designs from Emerson because it has a very nice sweeping, like a continual sweeping belly. Looks great and is once again, very, very tactical. Now for me, always the um, Commander family, whether it's the Super Commander, Mini Commander, or just normal Commander is always gonna be number one in my heart. I think that's my favorite. Emerson personally, but as far as representing Emerson, it's really hard to go wrong with something like a CQC-8 or a CQC-7 and something like a Horseman. All right, now let's talk about some of the, in my opinion, Golden Age Holy Trinity. Now, like I said, um, so the Sabenza or the Spider, the Sabenza from Chris Reeve Knives. It's only a matter of time before we talk about it because this guy is truthfully one of the most iconic knives out there and it is pretty much timeless. I think the Sabenza overall and its shapes, its lines, regardless to what blade shape you get or tip style, you know, regardless to whether you get inlaid handles or not, it's just a super, super timeless design. And Chris Reeve has a, I would say like an immaculate attention to detail, whether it's through the assembly and like how tight the tolerances are, or even just the execution and thoughtfulness of the design. I think that's one of the things that really helps categorize. And unfortunately nowadays, the lines are kind of blurred between expensive and cheaper knives. But back in the day, and even still to the point of this knife, like the reason you spend more on something like, like a Chris Reeve is it's just really the attention to detail. Like if you're not that detail oriented, then you won't get that much out of something like a CRK. But once again, if you're the type of person that likes to take apart their knives, if you're the person that likes to really inspect the fine details of a knife, then Chris Reeves are really for you because with things like the Emerson, we'll just say, um, like especially the older Emersons, like if you take the knife apart, like the handle liners are, you know, like all jagged 
badly cut and there's just like a lot of unpolished components to it on the inside where you wouldn't notice them right well this is the type of knife that not only does chris reeve encourage you to take apart your knives and you know clean them and maintain them yourself but also when you do that you see how well everything fits together how nice the components play with each other and just how well like the craftsmanship is 100 percent there and i think honestly i'll probably do another video really breaking down chris reeves because i get so many questions and i see questions posed in like forums and stuff where they're like you know why buy you know a 400 or 500 dollar chris reeve where you can just go buy a 200 dollar chinese riot right uh and once again the lines are slightly blurred because the riots and stuff like wheeze aren't necessarily fundamentally bad knives but the attention to detail is unrivaled when it comes to Chris Reeve, like you cannot beat it. Once again, I've assembled and disassembled a lot of knives and Chris Reeves have to be the highest or the tightest tolerance. Like when you're putting in barrel spacers and stuff like that, like they press fit exactly. Like you have to like wiggle them around just to get that right angle for them to finally lock together. So it's, it's very, very precise. There's no room for error. There's no like, you know, rattles in this thing. Like hopefully you guys, can't hear anything but um you know there's no rattles in this thing when you uh you know like move it around and so you know it's it's stuff like that that makes it really really quality and why it's iconic and why it's been here for so long all right next one up is going to be hinderer knives with the xm18 i should also note too that the sabenza kind of forgot saying ages the sabenza has been around since the early 80s this of course is a sabenza 21 so it's far more modern but they had things like the sabenza classic and others that are more older designs that came out in the early 2000s to late 90s and of course before then they had like just the sabenza and so yeah these have been made in different iterations throughout the decades all right, the XM18 is another one that's been around since the um, early to mid 2000s, um, depending on what time you think like 2006 is to you. I was just probably like mid 2000s, so that's about how long the XM18 has been around. But the XM18 is really like one of the first flippers, and I think that's what makes it so iconic is that it's just a really nice design, well executed, and its performance is there, especially at least for the time frame. Once again, at same can be said about the Chris Reeve knives, like the Hinder, you know, there's a lot of very venerable offerings, but these guys were one of the first to really truly execute a proper flipper knife. So of course, I mean, there were other knives that were doing it before, but like on a professional level, something that you can genuinely put money into and feel confident in a quality product, the Rick Hinder XM18 was really that first one of its kind. So it's a very cool knife. Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of controversy around the company as a whole, but the actual tools themselves are pretty inarguable if you use them and you just, you know, genuinely don't care about like all the like little nitty gritty details. And I will say still like the fit and finish on these things, even internally is really there, not as tight of a tolerance as, um, Chris Reeve, but not too bad either. All right, guys, last one up is going to be Strider knives. Now, Strider probably is one of the most controversial, but in my mind, they are always going to be iconic because I had very much wanted a Strider for a long time, and obviously I have one, but uh, these knives are just awesome. And I will say that, uh, once again, a lot of people dislike them because they're rough, they're crude, and, you know, like the, a lot of these Striders go for actually more money than Chris Reeves, and they are not as high highly fit and finished and I will say like if you tear one down and stuff they're not like bad like on the inside everything is very squared away it's just these are kind of like a uh, a mixture between something like an Emerson and a Chris Reeve where like once again they're not they're not poorly made but they're they aren't quite as re refined and finished and I think the reason why they do that is so that you're going to be less afraid of using them potentially damaging them you know really putting them to what they should be you know like using them in the way you should they should be but mine I have fully disassembled this one you know tuned it up put a new edge on it and you know like done the whole works with this knife so for me I'm definitely not scared of using it and I mean I do the same with my hint or my uh, Chris Reeves as well I guess my hinders too but um yeah like 
I, I've definitely torn this one down. And once again, you know, it's not like sloppy. It's not Emerson level sloppy on the inside, but it is definitely not like, once again, the barrel spacers and all that kind of stuff. They fit together just fine, but it's not as precise. It's not quite um, to the level of Chris Reeve. But that being said, they are still very unique, very awesome. And I think that it is hard to argue that Striders have probably done more th unthinkable things than probably any other mainline knife brand out there, or at least Striders have been put in the hands of more questionable people than pretty much any other knife company out there. They've definitely, like, I think a lot of people are drawn to Strider because of that kind of unspoken heritage that they have, which is very combat. I mean, even the Strider SNG is literally named after two Delta Force operators. So... I think like if you go for Strider, you're definitely going uh, arguably, and people might crucify me in the comments, but for more tactical purposes. But that tactical, in my mind, it just means that you're getting a knife that has been used in certain ways and can be used in certain hard ways that um, other knives are not necessarily or have not been like tested. Um, so I guess that's the best way to put it. So it's not necessarily saying that you want to be tactical, but you know that these knives can uh, live up to just about anything you need them to do. And that is personally why I end up carrying a Strider a lot in the wilderness, because I know a lot of what people have put Striders like SNGs, SMFs, and different fixed blades through. So I know that SNGs can take a heck of a beating, even though they are expensive, even though they are collectible, they actually are very, very tough knives. Um, anyways, guys, that is about all I have to say about these iconic knives. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.